smoke emerges. Daryl Powell, Michael Shenton, Brian McDermott, and the Leeds Rhinos. An electric atmosphere. It is this moment that makes every player's hairs on the back of their neck stand on end. I thought it was a really interesting season, actually, because um, many of the teams that you'd usually associate with big, massive Super League teams like Warrington, Wigan, uh, St. Helens, for a large part of the season, probably weren't at their best and weren't performing in the way that we usually see them. Uh, but it was refreshing to see teams like Salford and Wakefield and uh, Castleford, the particular those rhubarb triangle type guys, doing so well and, and uh, bringing a different dynamic to the Super League season. Obviously, all we're bothered about is Leeds Rhinos, and that's all I focused on, is uh, getting us back to our best, bringing that next generation group of players that have been banging on about for the last uh, two years to, to the forefront. And it was fantastic to see them playing some of their best rugby, particularly after you know fighting relegation, being in that middle eights in 2016 and seeing the disappointment that the club went through. Obviously, I think the favourites from the start uh, throughout the year were, were obviously Casford. Um, the performances they put in and the, the results they had during the year were, you know, they, they were really, really on fire. And you know, I think they were the favourites as well. We had a plan and we we executed it quite well throughout the season. We just made a gradual build up for the season and and worked a lot of things. And obviously, it came off for us uh, near the end of the season, playing the obvious favourites who. Uh, who are the Castleford Tigers? So going into the whole game, the semi-final, um, with Danny Maguire and, and Rob Burrow's last game, um, it didn't so much play on our mind, but it was quite, I think it was quite a bit of motivation and um, it highlighted the fact that those guys have been there, they've done it and they've perform performed on, on that stage and, and they're really clinical and know what they're doing. So um, it really it really helped us on, in that semi-final and I think it, it gave us that that push and, and that kind of last big effort really to to send out send them out on a high um, at Headingley, but but also to get us to Old Trafford and and to to go and do what those guys can have shown that they've done so many times in the past. Yeah, the, the semi final against Hull was a, a big cauldron. It was a big uh, smelling pot, and it brought about a bit of anxiety because of the semi final in the Challenge Cup. Hull were fantastic in that semi-final and absolutely blew us away. But we just weren't at the races, and uh, after that semi-final at Challenge Cup, you start to wonder whether we're in sort of championship-winning form. And I don't think we were at that point, but there's always a chance to bring that back round and and as a group get ourselves into that mere cap mode that I, I think we always find ourselves towards back end of a, a Super League season, particularly when it starts getting a little bit cold and a bit wet. Uh, towards October, we seem to be able to smell that grand final air and uh, the uh, the Old Trafford environment. But Hull are a good side, and whilst we had Rob and Danny as a narrative to focus on, uh, I think Hull FC had Gareth Ellis as well, who's had a fantastic career, um, was a good teammate of ours, did uh, a lot of great things for Leeds Rhinos back when I packed down with him uh, as 11 and 12 in back row. But thankfully, you know, Danny Maguire and Rob Burrow playing in a 2004 type form they were just outstanding this year and it's a shame uh that they are moving on you, you sort of wonder whether they've got another year in them you know but it can't last forever you've got to move on and uh they were they're both happy about uh what they're doing uh 2018 and beyond but to finish off get a a semi-final win against a great team like all at Edinburgh, which was a, a, a pile of rubble for the most part as well, going through its own regenerative sort of process in the uh, next decades. Um, it was great to finish off in such fashion for two guys who are not just going to be legends, they're going to be icons. We uh, wanted to make a statement that night, come out and really um, flex our muscles, I suppose, in a bit to say, you know, we're here and we're ready to go. But obviously, you know, the fall of um, Stevie Ward that night hurt massively because he's a, he's a he's a good mate and um you know i've seen how much hard work he's put in to get where he's back to and playing his best football and um you know to see him go down those last minutes was quite devastating don't really remember right lots to be honest about the semi-final um you know obviously it were a massive game and i think it seemed to go pretty quick until the last 20 i think until we were in front um then it seemed to drag and i just remember kept looking at the time and i thought 10 minutes had gone and it were only two minutes had gone and, and stuff like that um 
And on, on Danny and, and Rob, it, it, it didn't seem like their last game as well, I think, because we were all pretty determined to, to send them out on a high and, and make sure they got out uh, on the highest stage at Old Trafford. Um, you know, no one really thought about it were, as it were, would have been their last game. And, you know, we were all determined to, to send them off in the right way. Oh, when I scored, I was absolutely buzzing. I just remember as soon as, um, as soon as I scored, I threw the ball in the crowd and I just remember Ollie grabbing hold of me and saying, calm, calm down, calm down, there's still 20 minutes left. Um, so I had to, to, had to settle it down. Um, but yeah, when I went, ended up going down, I thought I'd, uh, I thought I'd messed it up by coming back inside because I ended up slipping a bit. I thought, oh no, we have. <laughs> we're not going to score here. But you know, I managed to, to, to worm my way through it and get over the line and it, you know, it was a great feeling. You knew you were going to come away with some bruises and uh, your body was going to be in the same state as the south stand afterwards, you know, broken in, in a, a big pile. But we got there, we did it. It went right down to the wire. I remember chasing for the down wing, I think with about 30 seconds to go, two points behind thinking, oh no, oh no, don't let, don't let him go. And I think I dived off him, bounced off him. Uh, somebody else dived on him and we were just like pinballs, but we uh, put our bodies in way and managed to just scramble and, and got the job done. I had to do press. I think it was the Monday we went down to Manchester to uh, to meet with the Cast boys and obviously do the, the grand final build up in the press and this that and the other um i was reminded many a time that that day uh of how dominant cast have been and how you know they were the classy cast and um dead on favorites to win the grand final cast beat us eight eight times in a row um over the last couple of years there wasn't much emphasis really on on that for the for the grand final and and how that played into things um we knew that it was it was it was one game. It was one big game that, that we needed to win. We were 18 minutes away from from being able to wear the grand final rings and um, to lift that trophy. And we know it's it's a special type of performance. We the 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 thing that we had going into that game was um, that we needed to play to a level that we'd not played at all year, which in itself is quite a a scary thing to say and a scary thing to admit. But I didn't even know it in a row. Um, I think I've seen. Um I might have seen it on Twitter somewhere, the, like the a few days before the game, but I didn't realise it were eight in a row that that they had against us, to be honest. So, you know, it, that one in my mind at all. Um, as soon as I read that, I thought, oh, it, it don't really matter, you know, what, what can happen um, if we get a win? Then, do it, what does that in, in a row count for? Didn't really have an impact on me, but there was plenty of reminders that week about it, and um, I suppose I can fall back on a bit of a memory for me um, when I was back at Manly and. The Manly team I was a part of had been beaten by Melbourne so many times and we came out and the, at the underdogs in the grand final ended up um, winning at 40 nil. So you just uh, you just look back to moments like that in your career and, and, and experiences you've been a part of and lucky to be involved in and you just know that uh, you know there's always a chance. When Cass beat us, I don't know what it was, 62-10 or something ridiculous early on in the season, um, I didn't play in that game, but I drove there and uh, I had a few lads who weren't fit and they all come in my van, got a Volkswagen transporter with 255,000 miles on it and uh, they all piled on it and all that smoke piling uh, down Weldon Road and uh, we were obviously really disappointed having lost that heavily and there were a lot of cast fans just banging up windows and all sides and giving me a bit of stick, a bit of banter, it was all, it was all in decent nature. I've been a few times with uh, Rugby M, so I think they recognise Van. And one particular guy put a, a baby's dody on my wiper. I've talked about it a few times, but I wouldn't take the wiper out of the, the dody off my wiper. I just left it there all, all season. And it just served as a reminder every time I got in the van what I'm going training for and uh, how much effort and energy I need to put in and how much concentration and discipline I need to maintain throughout the season. And it was a reminder, and every time you know, we get beat at Bycast at Magic Weekend and, and then at Edinley, they just seemed to have it over us and whatever we did, just couldn't quite get there, but I knew we just needed to keep building. It didn't matter how many games they'd won in a row, all you do, need to do is win one, and that's in a grand final. And all you've got to do is get to a grand final, and it's whatever happens that night. And having been there so many times, having had the experience, knowing that, Danny and Rob were finishing, seeing the group of young boys who had matured so much in the last sort of 12 months. We knew we had all the ingredients to go there and, and perform on a big stage. Got some big stage players, you know, some internationals, people like Adam Cuthbertson who thrive in uh, those types of games and those types of environments. So it was about getting there and we got there, which is the main thing. And, and then the week building up, you know, I think we were the underdogs and even the people that wanted the best for us probably 
didn't quite believe in uh, the head of heads that would win. I think in the heart of hearts, they had the faith. Um, the boys certainly did. Uh, unfortunately, my uh, Dodie got stolen from a window wiper uh, about a month before <laughs> final, so I didn't have it there as a reminder, but I didn't need it anymore. You know, it had uh, given me that reminder all season. I think somebody from Bromley, I live in Bromley, had uh, nicked it. So there's there's definitely a baby in Bromley right now with a, with a Dodie that's been on my uh, wiper for 18 months, sucking away.